Thank you. Hello, hello. Thank you everyone for joining me today. And of course I have a guest in the house. I, I mean, believe it or not, I've met her a long time ago, but we've never actually met in person. Amazingly, I was on her podcast show, um, Creator Authorities. If I'm saying it wrong, she will correct me. Um, <clears throat> and what, what it was, I was one of her first guests and I was so honored back then. This has been a little over a year now, but guess who's in the house today? Her name is Carol, middle initial J as in jumping, <laughs> and the last name Dunlop, D-U-N-L-O-P? Yes, you got it right. Yeah, got it right. That's it. Well, <clears throat> and there you go. And you're listening to me. I'm your host today and coach of Speak to Me First podcast show. I'm your no sugar coating coach. And today, Carol, a business strategist, website design strategist, you name it, she's done it. She's a multi, multi-time author. And on a different note, also correct, a uh, cancer survivor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So she knows all about survival mm -hmm. and resilience. Without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it today. Thank you to my national as well as international audience. Welcome, welcome, okay. Carol J. Dunlop, your online WOW strategist. How are you? I am awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so proud of you for getting this done because when we talked, you did not have a podcast. And when I saw you had one, I was like, ooh, let me go check this out. <laughs> <laughs> that's about that visibility folks people can yes. see if you what you're doing and if you're doing anything but like <laughs> I learned from you listening to a lot of your lives one of the things that you say as many other professionals who have been doing it longer than me um it's consistency yeah mm -hmm. consistency is. and it's not all about a website but of course that helps and you know all about that but mm -hmm. I just want you know to get right into it you uh, self-dubbed the online WOW strategist. Where did that come from? And what does it mean now for the people who are listening? Tell us a, a little bit about that. Uh, well, I can't say that I took it. I mean, that I, that I did it all because I was actually a coach of mine helped me come up with that because I told her what I did. You know, I create websites for entrepreneurs and she was like, I don't know how it was in a group setting, online wow, and that was it. And I was like, okay, so I'm the online wow strategist. And really what it means is when people see you online, you won't see you online, you want them to go, wow. <laughs> and, you know, not to have, not to expect you to be what you are. I mean, everyone expects you to have a website, have a web presence, maybe social media, but they're not expecting you to have a wow website. A wow website, just so you guys know, is one that answers the questions when you first hit the site. It You feel like you're home. You feel like you know this person. And most importantly, you feel like this person knows you, knows what you need, knows how to solve your problems because it's all presented right there in a way that's not salesy. It's not like icky feeling. It just feels like you, you know, ran into a long lost friend and they're welcoming you home. That's what the online wow experience is. Wow. And I, and I'll say, wow, all through this broadcast, <laughs> I, I guess, ju you know, just paste the W.O.W. right across my forehead. There you go. That's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> but one of the things I, I love about you, yeah, first of all, for people who are listening, they, they may not have heard of you, which would be, I can't believe that, um, or me, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you know, I'm, you know, the no sugar coating coach. So I really don't sugarcoat it. And what I found that what I love about your lives I've seen you on Facebook and other platforms, but it's a, a huge presence on Facebook. And you do a lot of, um, you know, posting and, and getting out there between mm -hmm. Instagram and LinkedIn. Um, but, you know, in your opinion, when you're seeing people such as myself, I mean, I wasn't a podcast host. I, I didn't do it. And then all of a sudden I did do it. You talk a lot about being an author. I haven't done that yet, but I am an inspiring author. Yes. 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 Um, and I just want to say for people like me, you say, well, you want to do almost everything. Is there something, some way that you kind of narrow it down 
as a coach, because you are a business coach as well, mm-hmm. right? Through entrepreneurship. Right. Um, what is the number one thing that, you know, some of us are missing when it comes to narrowing down what they could do or should do or what have you to get them, get more visibility, I would say. That is a great question. Basically getting visibility means that you're in front of the people who you think want to work with you or who you know could possibly want to come into your tribe and hire you and be a part of you. So you have to think, what are these people looking at? What, you know, where are they? And you always, you always want to go where your clients or potential clients are because you want them to see you. And I found that writing a book and the name of the podcast is, is authority creator. So you almost had it right? And yeah, and I was working with another coach and we came up with that. So I love coaching. I know that coaching works. So for people who say, you know, coaching is a waste of time, waste of money, that is not true because I would not be here as an online wild strategist if it weren't for coaches. I would not have had that podcast, the Authority Creators podcast, if it weren't for a coach who saw that. So the thing is you want to appear to your audience as the one who knows them. I mean, you're really in their brain, intimately knowing them. Mm. So when they look at you, they're like, wow, this person really knows what I want. They know the problem that I have Mm. and they have the solution. So there's no better way. And as a matter of fact, you can't even spell authority without author, right? So author is in the middle of that. And when you write a book, people look at it as such a big and daunting task that Mm -hmm. when you finish the book, they're like, oh my gosh, you wrote a book instant, you know, your brownie points go up way up. Your authority goes up way up when you said you've written a book. Mm -hmm. And I've found also that you don't have to write a novel or a dissertation that you turn into a book. You can do some of the, what we call the low content books. That's really what I've been focusing on the last few years, like journals and planners and things like that, because these can help your audience to do what it is that they want to do. Mm. And because you wrote the book, you help them. They look at you as the person that did it. And so one of the best things you can do is to write a book. The other thing to get yourself out there is of course you have to use social media. Mm-hmm. And the main reason I, li- I like using social media is because it's free. You know, you don't have to pay for it unless you're getting ads or something, but it's free. And most people are on social media. Now, if you think that you're a business owner and you can do without social media, all I can say is, well, good luck. (laughs) And you can do it, but it's going to cost you so much more money. So why not use the stuff that's free? Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm not talking about getting into the gossipy parts or, you know, downing people or, you know, being, being mean or whatever, unless that's who you are. If that's who you are, you're a mean person like um, Howard Stern or something, and you want to cause a ruckus, be you, whoever it is, you just be you, do your thing. Don't try to be somebody else, be you. And social media allows you to do that, allows you to Uh be you, be who you are, talk to the people you want to talk to, Get in front of the people that you want to know, like, and trust you, and then buy from you. So social media, getting a book out there. The other thing that you can do, definitely, this really needs to be first, is get your website up and running. You can't use social media as your website because, as we all know, you don't own anything on social media unless you're Mark Zuckerberg or one of those other heads. Mm -hmm. If you're not Mark Zuckerberg, then uh, you can't look at social media as your website. You have to have an actual physical website where people Mm -hmm. can go to. Mm -hmm. The reason you want to do this is because you don't own anything on social media. Uh, How many people remember MySpace? Nobody talks about MySpace. (laughs) You know, I know you know about it too. I know you know about MySpace. But for those of you who are like, what is MySpace? MySpace was Facebook before Facebook came around. Mm -hmm. Now there is no, I mean, there still is MySpace, but it doesn't hold a cloud like it used to. So Mm. social media can come and go. Social media sites come and go, but your website stays there. Your website is the one place in this whole entire earth and universe that's the hub for your business. Mm. And you can put your thoughts out there in your blog or on your site. You can talk about what you want to. You can talk how you want to, and you don't have to be afraid that somebody's going to put you in jail, like social media jail, not real jail, but social media jail, (laughs) and stop you, stop your voice, cut off what you're saying, put Mm -hmm. you like you can't even do anything. So that's why you need a website. 
You definitely need a book because that's authority and you need social media. So those are three things that you really, really need to look at and take advantage of. Because once you write the book, the book is there. <laughs> Nobody's going to take it away from you. You're always known as an author. I'm a five-time author now. And I learned yes. that secret when I did that first one. I was like, oh yeah, we can do this. Some other things you could do. You could do a podcast, just like what you're doing now, Toy. Because why? Because people love to listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. Right now, the podcast world is exploding. Yeah. There are all types of hosts out there. There are all type of podcasts. There's all yeah. type of ideas. So why not? put it into a podcast and let people listen to it. Because the thing is, podcasts are portable. You can listen on your mm -hmm. phone. You can listen in your car. You can listen while you're working out. You're listening while you're driving. It doesn't really matter. You can just listen, you know, on a, on a computer. You can listen on, on, a, on a phone, like I said. So you can get mm -hmm. into the ear yeah. of the people who you mm -hmm. want to pay you, mm -hmm. hire you, be yeah. in your tribe. And when you do that, when, you know, a podcast is like taking you around, you're riding in people's pockets all the time. You're in their ear whenever they want to listen to you or get close to you or see what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at, hey, this is my friend. Because, you know, when, you, when you're on TV, when people are on TV and something happens to an actress or a character in a, yeah. in a movie or something, we feel mm -hmm. so bad or happy or whatever. We get emotionally involved with them. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes for a podcast and live broadcasts and things like that. People get to know you. Mm -hmm. They feel like they like you. Yeah. And then they start to trust you. Mm -hmm. And once, once they do that, that no like trust thing, the next thing is they're going to buy from you. And if you live up to your side of the bargain, where you're providing them value, continual value, your value is getting bigger, they're mm -hmm. buying more everybody wins. Yes. And one thing I learned, um, and that summed everything up, because one of the things I learned from listening to uh, other coaches and speakers and authors is that consistency, especially in social media um, or on any platform, if you, choose, <laughs> if you choose LinkedIn, some of us now, um, you know, we're choosing TikTok. And that first mm -hmm. it was, well, no, you know, um, you're older, more mature, you shouldn't be on TikTok. And, I, and then I started looking at people on TikTok. I'm like, wait a minute there's everybody there's what some people right. all ages so if you have a right. podcast right now um i'm in 12 countries i'm thankful and hopefully that will grow um mm -hmm. it's just been a little bit over a year and wow. i never knew where it was gonna go you know mm -hmm. but hey i got people there so yeah um and then your audience can grow both men and women mm -hmm. to come in but one thing i like about what you said the like factor and the trust factor mm -hmm. and people want to know that they, they first people say this, but yeah, we all want to be liked, but you yeah. want to be liked for the good things. You don't want to be yeah. disliked. And so I'm very careful and cautious um, of what I do out there. And I think for some people, um, like you said, it, it depends on whatever you, you know, it's still a sales factor, but you mm -hmm. don't have to feel or look all salesy about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a website and if you're not sure what you're doing, folks, I'm talking to Carol J. Dunlop, the <laughs> online wild strategist and Exactly. Yes. Podcast show. <laughs> Just go ahead and look her up and she's going to provide her website so that if you are out there struggling, you shouldn't be because there are many people like you, um, Coach Carol, who are really there to help people. Now, right. and, and, and you offer a lot of freebies online. I've seen them complimentary. Yes. Comment. You have yes. a huge email <laughs> marketing going on. I'm like, oh, that's Carol's email again. There it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. It's so, so funny. <laughs> you know, and, and so there you go. So that means you do have a huge presence. Um, with that said, you know, do you draw the line if people are saying, okay, I don't have a website, mm -hmm. but I have a product. I'd love to sell it, you know, um, and they, they don't have a website. It's like, well, should they just go ahead and start posting on social media? figure out which one they should start at and then work their way up? Or would you say, look, just build even a, just a real quick website to get started. What would be the way? Oh, well, that's a great question. And no, you don't have to have a website to get started, especially if you're a coach or even if you're a service provider, you can use social media that way 
to get the word out there and let people know what you're doing. A perfect thing that you could do mm -hmm. is sign up for, get on Facebook, start a page, because mm -hmm. the reason you want to do a page is because you don't have to join Facebook in order to see the page. So pages are searchable in Google. So if you start a page, it's out there. Mm -hmm. So you can start promoting your information and you can't promote on your profile anyway. So you need to have a page. And if you ever want to run Facebook ads, you got to have a page. So okay. start a page, put your information out there. The one thing I'd have to say is for every five posts that you put out there, only one of those posts, only one mm -hmm. should be a, pro a promotion. The other four posts should be valuable helpful, inspiring, motivational posts. Because the thing is, you don't want to follow somebody who is always talking about, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy, 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 buy for me, buy for me. You're not going to follow that person. And you wouldn't follow the person. So people aren't going to follow you if you're just always talking about buying. But if you're adding value to their life, doesn't matter if you sell websites mm -hmm. or if you sell shoes or if you sell jewelry or if you sell picture frames. You have to add value to people's lives. Just think about all the craziness and horrific things that are going on right now. Yeah. How people need goodness in their lives. They need awesomeness in their lives. Yeah. And if you can provide that to them, they're going to follow you. Mm -hmm. And if you provide what else that they need or want, then they're going to buy from you. And like you said, it doesn't have to be salesy. It doesn't have to feel icky. It's just natural that mm -hmm. you're showcasing this information for them. And then you're saying, hey, by the way, I also sell picture frames that help you do whatever and showcase your best pictures or something. Mm -hmm. But just remember that of those five posts, mm -hmm. only one every time, only one needs to be a promotion. The other four need to be valuable, motivational, inspirational or something, or even educational to help them. So mm -hmm. if you keep that in mind, then I think you'll be okay. But eventually you will want to have a website because you can do just, you can just do so much more with your own website, but you don't, it is not a must that you have to have it for you to make any money. There are plenty of people out there that have started off making money, but don't be fooled. They do have websites now. After they started making money, they got a website. It's like the the uh, weather person, I don't know what they call them, weather yeah. professional or whatever. That starts meteorologist. Like yeah. Meteorologist. Yeah, there you okay. go. Thank you very much. I don't want to call somebody. <laughs> no, <something> meteorologist. <laughs> so they, <laughs> yeah, they just got this job. You may see them, you know, they're wearing maybe, uh, you know, they're cycling through their five dresses or they're cycling through their five suits. But after a while, you start seeing some new suits and some new dresses coming in there. Oh, they're making a little bit more money. So you got to look at it the same way. Everybody doesn't start on the top. Everybody starts at the bottom and works their way up. So mm -hmm. think about it that way. Well, one thing I like, that's true. Um, I wrote this down because the way I coach and most recently I did a boot camp for executives and, and professionals, but traditionally, mm -hmm. you know, they're whatever they're making at a certain amount of money. And then everybody says, oh, you're an executive. But right, right. That said, <laughs> <laughs> so I said executive and professional. So right, that, right, not right. to separate, not to leave anybody out because I love everybody. And I want you to be coached by the No Sugar Coding Coach. But one of the things that I was really specific about in my last boot camp, and by the way, that was a premiere, it was my first. And I focused oh. on two things, visibility, and value, visibility mm -hmm. and value. And one, yes, one is different from the other, but they are joint, they are connected. Yes. The, again, don't waste your time not having conversations of value. Right. You need to know when right. to walk away. If the website's right. not working, it's not bringing you anything, then you need to maybe redesign your website. You need yes. to always be thinking ahead of the game. You want the visibility. People will go to your website, but I've heard you on numerous occasions say, okay, well, now that I'm there, what am I going to get from this website? Right. You know, is it a great <laughs> It, yeah. Great landing page is start is a starter, but now mm -hmm. as I go through, well, I'm bored. I don't see anything. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm on. And and they do the ones who do all the analytic, the, uh, you know, all of the analytical data that's mm -hmm. out there. It really, I look at the analytical data of my podcast. So I kind of think of it like what you're saying as well. But I always think visibility and uh, value because yes. the value for me is in the content for mm -hmm. me. And yeah. then for some, some person that is thinking about today, Carol, just one tip 
um, or to, if they are just thinking about building their website, they, again, they don't have one um, mm -hmm. and they have an idea. And what they're basically, it's a service that they're selling, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, it may be, maybe it is a coaching. They just got into the coaching realm. You know, is it more important for them to get out in front of the audience, maybe doing lives, do, creating videos, short content, or again, you know, without the website being built, or is that like a no-no? Hmm. Or maybe combine it. I'm just... No, I think that they could get out in front of people doing the lives because doing the lives is visibility and doing a live video is the next best thing to you being there in person. So yes, go ahead and do the lives, but you got to have, just remember this, you got to have some place to send them because you're talking about giving them value. You can only give them so much value on your live because if you think about it, you know, however old you are, and I'm talking to the people who are listening right now, however, you're 40, 50, 60, 70, 30, 20, however old you are, that is how much experience you bring to the table. So if you're bringing 30, 40 years of experience to the table, there is no way that you can give people all of that experience in one little live. Mm -hmm. You've got to segment it. You've got to do like the movies do. If you think about it, and I always bring this, uh, think about this, because we all know about Martin Luther King and his whole life and his journey and how he started here and in this little town and he came to Atlanta and he did the, the civil rights and all that. But when they made a movie, the movie that um, was talking about him you know, doing the uh, being on the Selma, Brit, the bridge in Selma, mm -hmm. they only focused on that little piece, that little section of what it took for him to you know, get the march going, what happened, how they went through it. That was all they were talking about. They weren't talking about how he was born and then how he died and all of that. So you have to think what little piece of my experience is going to bring value to the people when they come to my life. So you give them that, but they want more. You're hoping that they want more and you, they want more. So now you got to give them, you know, download this or go and watch the next video or go to my website and get this freebie. So you got to send them somewhere mm -hmm. that they can actually land on, maybe a landing page. It doesn't have to be your full website. And the next thing you want to make sure is they're getting on your list mm -hmm. because just doing lives after lives after lives after lives are, is only going to get you so far. Mm -hmm. The place that's, that you're really, really going to explode and give the most value to your people is in your email list because these are people who have said, hey, I like you, what you're doing. I think I want to find out more about you. They go to your website they, or your landing page. They sign up for your email list. Now that's a form of trust. They've raised their hand. They say, hey, tell me more. Mm -hmm. I want to get more involved in this. What do I need to do? And now don't just because they went to the site and got on the email list, you have to email them. You have to stay in contact with them. You do. Think about all the stars that you follow right now. They want you to follow them because they want to tell you what they're up to. That's what you do with the email list. You tell them what you're up to. Hey, next week I'm doing an, another boot camp. or hey, I got this freebie that I'm giving you. It's going to give you 10 tips to do something. Mm -hmm. So you're always giving them enormous amounts of value and having an email list where you're growing your subscribers. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. If you don't have subscribers, you really don't have an audience to sell to. Mm. Yeah, so subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Yeah. And while we're on that, people, Trust and believe if I upload this video to YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube. Yes, channel. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say that there out there. There you go. <laughs> um, and of course, you can find Carol on all social media platforms, and we'll make sure that we get that information out. But that seems like to be the common thread here. Um, again, even on my thoughts of visibility and value, the content. And a lot of times, I think um, for me, it was the struggle became. It's not that I'm, I can do anything live all day if I had to and if I had mm -hmm. that kind of time. Um, and at first I was like, well, I wasn't doing as much video content. And then you heard, kept hearing everybody say, you need to do video content. You need to, yeah, okay, yeah. even if you're on Facebook. And then if I wanted to get people to join me and talk on a live, everyone's shy or they just shied away from it and they just kind of 
No, I'm I'm listening to you. I listen to you every Tuesday with talking with Toy on Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. And I would see the number grow after I got off the live. It was the most interesting dynamic of how that mm-hmm. worked. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, shout out to the people that they, they would just, just like, no, no, no. And I knew they were there because you can kind of see. But right. at any rate, um, you know, I say this, you know, start, even if it's starting small, just mm-hmm. start. Just I start. Just, to start. Yes. Don't yes, worry about start. the people if they just, you know, um, stay away from negativity. I don't deal with that um, I don't either. at all. I don't either. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, I'm very cautious and conscious of my content because what mm-hmm. I don't, you don't want to offend anyone. What you want to do is just be authentic to who you are with right. your content and people right. will just run away if you seem if you know depending on how your attitude is or how you do and so yeah. i've been told that i'm doing pretty well so i'm gonna leave it there um yes. but i am the no sugar coating <laughs> coach and people say oh she's the no sugar coating coach she's not going to sugarcoat it that's Mm-mm. true um that's part of my new york nature i'm a native new yorker you know uh <laughs> and that's for life it doesn't matter where i live that's what i call home that's it but that's you know it. Um, currently based out of the Atlanta area, and so are you. So mm-hmm. um, you are at you a Georgia peach? That's what they call it. Me? Uh, are you? Uh, no, I'm not a Georgia peach. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm a South Carol South Carolinian. I'm okay. originally from South Carolina, and we have uh, actually South Carolina has bigger and better peaches than Georgia. Just let me tell you. <laughs> Again, uh, no shit. Coding coach will just tell you. I'm a native New Yorker, and we're right here in Georgia, and yes. we're gonna leave it right there. there and I go. love my peaches. So as a matter of fact, too. when I get off and have the broadcast, I'll probably have another one. But yeah, I got it. So South Carolina, which is right next door, people just go yes. drive up mm-hmm. I-20 or wherever how you get in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> easy peasy. And one of the things too, I want to just switch topics um, as we're going to um, wrap up soon. I want to talk about on the personal side because you have a um, it, a resilience story, multiple like I do. I mean, I talked about this on an earlier podcast and interview when I interviewed someone regarding grief Mm -hmm. and uh, grief and loss and loss of a child in particular, which had happened to me in my early twenties. And a lot of people like, no, I can't believe it. Is that true? Wow. 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 Right. Right. Um, And, but I'm still here to talk Mm -hmm. about it. So again, a lot of my content does focus on resilience. um, And then there's a specifics to grief and loss. Or if it's something medical, it's unfortunate or, you know, chronic diseases, diabetes. I talk a lot about that type two. And um, when I was reading about your background, you mentioned um, that you were a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. And I said, this lady, when I first laid eyes on you, I mean, you were just popping out content like crazy. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, she certainly wasn't tired or anything. Um, you know, the point would be is that you still came back and you were able to, to help a lot of women who may mm-hmm. have been going through the same thing just by your talks, um, your encouragement, and, um, and you're always smiling uh, when uh-huh. you get on your lives. So I just want to know just really briefly, because of course with time, can you, um, can you shed some light on you? You've been through what most people say, wow, that that's it. I don't know coming back from that, but yeah. you're still doing it and you're still encouraging other potential business owners, coaching them. What's your secret? What's your resilient factor? What is it? Hmm. Made? Well, my resilient factor, I think is my faith, my faith and belief that God will take me through anything that comes up I'm actually a 10 year well 11 year uh, cancer survivor yes so I was a personal trainer for 10 years and took great care of my body you know ate good stuff worked out all the time bodybuilding competitor crossfit competitor fitness competitor all of that Mm -hmm. and when I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer stage two breast cancer I was like on the phone and I was like you sure you got the right Carol Dunlop who are you talking about Right. And it was like, yes, ma'am. You know, I was going in for my yearly uh, mammogram, but I found the lump myself. And mm. because I'm always uh, conscious of my body, what's going on. And I felt the lump and I'm like, mm, that's not right. And I immediately that's called right. my doctor, went in, we did the biopsy and stuff. And it came back that I did have cancer. I was like, oh, mm. Lordy. Mm. But, you know, my husband and I were able to get through it. Mm-hmm. I went through, I decided to have a double mastectomy and with uh, reconstruction 
And I went through six rounds of chemo. I did not have to go through radiation, thank God. But um, it took a, it really did take a toll on everything. But I was online at that time, because like I said, I was a personal trainer and my Mm -hmm people went through the whole thing with me. And I remember crying several times on my podcast that I had at the time, Fit for Life Radio, and telling people, you know, about my procedures, what was going on. It was, it was so much stuff. It was like a year of going through things, recovery, and all of that. It wasn't until I was diagnosed in um, July of 2011, but it wasn't until uh, way into 2012 that I actually begun to feel you know okay and like I was all right and my online people were right there Mm. my subscribers my listeners all of them were right there helping me get through it so we could not have gotten through what we got through without friends family and my subscribers I always say that so now today you know I freely share my story because again, another coach told me you need to share your story you need to put it out there and I had shared it but not in a way like I do now and telling, you know, telling really about how difficult it was. It wasn't an easy breezy thing. It was, it was very hard and very difficult, but I remember specifically uh, one instance right before I had the operation and stuff, they were trying to see, it it was in my left breast, but they were trying to see if the right breast had anything uh, that we need to be concerned about. And I'm I'm laying on this um, table while they're getting ready for the procedure. And I just broke down crying Mm -hmm. and God said to me, this is not going to be what's going to take you out. He didn't tell me what it was that is going to take me. I could be a bus or something. I don't know. But he said, this is not going to take you out. So I knew that I was going to get through that whole experience. I was going to be whole again. I was going to live again. I was going to be okay. And I did. And I came out of that um, just so energized and you know, ready to tell my story and ready to show people that you can do whatever you want. And as a matter of fact, I started in I started taking CrossFit at that time. And then I I became a CrossFit competitor with my team that I was there. We won some challenges and stuff. So, uh, you know, a breast cancer survivor and I'm up there, you know, lifting that weight and doing that stuff and having fun and everything. So it was, you know, it was a lesson. I wouldn't wish it on anyone to have to go through. So if any of you are going through Mm -hmm. breast cancer or the chemo or whatever, or can't decide, you know, I'm willing to talk with you and, you know, share my story with you and just give you that, that push that you need to keep moving forward because God is an awesome God and he will, whatever you think that he can do, he will do. So that my faith and my family, my friends and my subscribers are what brought me through it. Wow. All three friends, your faith and family, and no matter what order, um, you are still standing and you're still thriving and you're teaching others how you're coaching them to success on the business side. But one thing I say about our stories is as coaches, we know we, we really encourage people to just realize who, you know, know who they are Mm -hmm. first, and then they understand they're on a journey, whether it's your career or your personal life. And for me, I always say, you know, I'm the no sugar coding coach. I help you navigate both your career and or your life skills journey. Because my true belief, um, Coach Carol, is that you can have something going on Uh, in your personal life, and you can almost to the dollar know that something will affect your career life. Oh, yeah. That's when people don't get it. Sometimes they say, no, everything. Oh, I have a wonderful career. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm making money. And sometimes we're not always making money. We may look like we're making money. Right. Right. (laughs) That is a thing. My mother taught me always look like you have money, even if you don't. Uh, That was just her way. And now I understand it as a full grown adult, um, one who has understood job loss, understands how mergers, you go to work Mm -hmm. one day, the company was merging, now you don't have a job and I worked in HR. So go figure, they would announcing layoffs on the day I was starting the new job in HR. Oh, wow. (laughs) Again, when I talk about coaching on career development and personal development, there are stories there. But I want people who are listening to make sure encouraging them, you know, uh, both men and women, please, if you know you have something going on and it's really bad right now, you know, they say joy comes in the morning. 
Yes, you know, if you can just does. if you can just believe that, keep that in your mindset, and then work your way down to the heartstrings, and and that's <laughs> really what the way I look at it, you know. So I thank you so much for sharing that because there's some women out there who is maybe going through this, and and by the way, men. Um, I was going to say, or men, yeah, or men can develop breast cancer. It's no longer just we think of women op- for the obvious, but for men or women, um, is there one uh, last thing you'd like to say uh, to somebody that may actually be going through that? Just something to encourage them through their journey. Mm. Uh, the one thing I would like to say is find out as much as you can about your diagnosis without overwhelming yourself. So then you are clued in to what needs to happen, what will happen, what could happen. Just, you know, don't be afraid of the knowledge because not knowing is not going to help you at all. Mm -hmm. Knowing will help you. And then I want you to get your attitude right because attitude is probably 90% of your being able to go through it and recover Mm. from whatever you're going through and uh one final thing don't think that you're alone there are plenty of people Mm -hmm. you look at them walking down the street every day they are breast cancer survivors men and women because if you have breasts you can get breast cancer if you have breast tissue you can get breast cancer so just look at people you know they are here the survivors we're here to help you and Mm -hmm. if you think you can't find somebody go to the cancer research foundation and say hey i'm I've just been diagnosed or whatever, because they were wonderful in helping with my journey. But the thing is, your attitude is what's going to help get you through. I don't know if I'm, we're all praying that you survive this, but only God knows what's going to happen. But if you really want to survive, you believe that God is going to give you the gift of survival. It's going to happen. That's Mm. all I can say. It's going to happen. Yes. You just encourage a whole lot of people in 12 countries. (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) Yes, yeah. thank you so much for that. So um, before we close, and we're going to make sure we get your information out, because I know there's always something new and improved coming yeah. up on Carol J. Dunlop's <laughs> plate, the online wild strategies. You've been yes. listening to Coach Carol uh, J. Dunlop. I'm Toy Johnson Vincent, your no sugar coating coach. And we're on Speak to Me First podcast show. That's right, where we like to listen, embrace and really get down to the meat and potatoes of what's going on. So I wanna just say, if I throw out two words to you, this is something that I, you know, I just wanna do it because I know it's gonna help. Well, go right ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm gonna say two things. And the first thing that comes to your mind, uh, new website. Hmm. First thing that comes to my mind is that you need to get my WOW website planner. So you can know what you're putting on your website, what's needed, how to do it. And the planner is totally free, but it gives you a breakdown of what all is needed, what you need to do, how to do it, everything. I put my all into it just to let you know. Okay. Second thing, developing content. Ooh, Uh, the main thing I can say about that, the content that you develop has to resonate with the people that you want to consume it. So if you just, for example, if you are a dog owner, you can't put cat stuff out there. I'm just saying, you know, you got to put it out for the dog people. So whatever your content that you're creating, you're putting out there, it has to be valuable to the people who are consuming it. Wow. Isn't that amazing? See that? And then my brain was saying, I should come up with a few more, but we're good. <laughs> that is so funny. I did say you can ask me anything. I really did say that. I told her like you can ask me anything. Like I'm ready. Like, what is she gonna say now? <laughs> but um, anyway, no, that's fine. So, uh, Carol, where can uh, people find you or connect with you? And tell the um the audience what do you have coming up next? If there's something that people can get involved or, or maybe support you and what you're doing, um, whether it's in you know your book, anything you got going on. <laughs> That, oh, you can, awesome. that you can share. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Well, first of all, I want to let you know that the best way to get in contact with me and to stay in contact with me is to go to my website and download that WOW website planner mm-hmm. so that you can be on point with your website. And you can do that by going to csicorporation.com forward slash planner csicorporation.com forward slash planner. And when you get on my list, I will let you know all the stuff is go- that is going on. I have a 
uh, masterclass that's coming up next month about actually how to do your wild website. So when you get that planner, you will automatically, if you choose to do so, be added to my list so that you can know all the things that are going on. If you want something like right away, what can I do? What can I do? Then you can join my Facebook group. And that every Tuesday, I do the 10K Tuesday training. And that is to train you how to make your first or your next 10K month. So the group is unmarketing, unmarket your business on Facebook. So, but the best, best way, that's what I'm saying, go to the website, download the planner, you'll get all the information that you need there. And you're on multiple um, social medias, uh, uh, platforms, and that would be, it's Facebook, you're LinkedIn. I don't know face, but we're on everything, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and they're all CSI Corporation. That's our handle. We were very lucky, fortunate, whatever you call it, to get that for just about everything. But if you go to, if you go to the website, you'll see all the places we are, but look us up on, on social media. It, most likely it's going to be CSI Corporation. It's just a couple of them that aren't, but the, the good ones like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, they're all CSI Corporation. Okay. And by the way, speaking of any acronyms, does the CSI stand for something in particular or? Yes, it's Creative Services International. I have, I have my husband to thank for that because he is originally from the U.S. Virgin Islands. And he said, you know, we have these creative services that we're doing, web design, graphic design, and all that. And this company is going international. And it has, we have clients in New Zealand, the UK, um, Australia, all over the US. So we have clients everywhere. And that was his vision. Mm-hmm. Well, that is his vision, not just was, but yeah. is his vision. <laughs> it's his vision. Well, that's great. You know, so the, to combine it with the spouse and everything, um, you're just bringing everything to light and helping yeah. people behind the scenes. So we have to shout out to your husband as well for doing that. And one thing I didn't touch on um, before I close, I know you have a strong technical background in terms of technology and, and uh, all of those things. So I just wanted to know, um, you know, are you still delve in that world or are you kind of more sticking to being an author and with your podcast, everything with technology, are you still really do, delving into that? Everything with technology? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm a tech queen, honey. I love <laughs> anything with technology. And basically, you know, your website is the best tech that you can have. So all the other things that we do, the podcast, becoming an author, doing summits and stuff, they all those roads lead to your website. So that's why I do those things because we created, we started out creating websites for business owners and entrepreneurs in 1994 when the web first came around and we could do that. But then what we found out was, okay, you can have the prettiest, most awesome website in the world, but if no one sees it, what good is it? So we started teaching our clients how to market to get people to their website. Okay, so well, that's good. Now, do you, this is a question I just thought about since you were talking about it in the books. There. Do you have a particular book that you wanted to show? You, you certainly can do that if you want. That's nearby. If not, don't worry about it. People will go to your website. I don't know if there's something you... Uh, yes, of course. My book, I have it right here at my fingertips. Of Let course you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my book. It's called okay. Unmarket Your Business. All right. And... Let, me take your, let me take your beautiful picture. Hold up your book. And oh, let's do it there. great smile. <laughs> Excellent. Hope All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. And this, this was the first solo book that I did. It's called Unmarket Your Business, 10 Ways for Savvy Entrepreneurs to Stand Out, Stop Struggling, and Start Profiting. And this book is a number one international bestseller. So wow. eh, first one. And then now I'm a five-time bestseller. So wow. It's you know what? Um <laughs> It's just wow all over the place. Let's just keep it at yeah. wow. Yeah. Wow. Yes, <laughs> wow. And, uh, you know, thank you so much, Cal, just even taking this time to, to come on my podcast show. And I'm very thankful that you gave me, you know, uh, a time to be on your show. And then oh, yeah. knowing that I was one of the first ones, I was like, uh-oh, well, I have to be the first. And I also want to be as best as I can be on your show. So I'm thankful um, of that opportunity. And it's still out there. People want to listen to it. Oh, what, yeah. You're, you're like one of the most popular guests that I had. Every time, and I told you this before, every time I look at my stats, you know, my stats are going up. But here's Toy at the top of I don't care where it goes. Toy, the nose, sugar coat, and coat. She is up <laughs> at the top. So I wanted to thank you for that because you were the actual first guest on the show. And you're still on the top. 
Wow. That's how you, that's how you stay. <laughs> and with that, like I said, this program is going to be over in about five seconds because <laughs> she just said everything good. And so, <laughs> but um, yeah, but in all seriousness, I really do thank you so much for sharing um, not only about your professional background, um, you, you know, you're right here in the uh, greater Atlanta area and people want to find you if you're going to be doing any events. Do you have any particular events coming up that you'll be in person not live. or virtual? Okay. I've got, I've always got virtual things going on. So go okay. to the website and find those out. But um, I don't have any live just yet. I am really creeping back into the live world. Okay. As, as a matter of fact, yesterday I did do a teenpreneur workshop. So that's my way of giving back to the community where we're helping teenagers get their businesses out there, learn how to make money and stuff. It was really great. This is my third year doing that. So we had a great time. But as far as me conducting workshops and stuff like that, getting back into it, I think more toward the end of the year, you know, let this COVID thing settle down a little bit more. But you can find me online just about everywhere. Facebook is my favorite. That's where, mo that's where most of my clients reside. So that's where I am. Okay, that's that whole CSI international. Yes, find yes. her, folks. You can find her. <laughs> trust and believe. She's out there. This is Carol J. Dunlop is out yes. there on the social media platform. She can help you also have a wow website yes. with design and, and just creating and getting your content. You take care of the content and she will help you and show you how to get it out there so that you yes. can have more visibility and most important, as I always talk about coaching, visibility and value. That is mm -hmm. it. On that note, I want to thank my guest today, Carol J. Dunlop. Again, your online wild strategist. Make sure you go pick up a copy of her book. I'm sure if you check out Amazon and everywhere else online, there it is. You will find her. Make sure you do that. Um, and she does live. She's getting back out there more. So we're going to be looking for more things coming out of uh, Atlanta with Carol J. Dunlop. Again, I'm Toy Johnson Vincent, your no sugar coating coach. And I really want to tell you, if and even if it's something small, go ahead and start it. Even if it's really tiny, go ahead and start it. Stop looking for the grandness and really start from the bottom up. If you can, you have your content, get it out there. Remember, no one knows who you are just because you're sitting behind a computer. You've <laughs> got to get your things out there. People want to know you. So if you're kind of reserved and shy about doing the videos, I'm going to encourage somebody and let you know today. I wasn't always the video person. I was pretty much behind the scenes, but I'm doing it now and I'm doing it well. And I'd like to help you help you navigate both your career and or your life skills journey. And Carol can help you with the website stuff yes. how about that yes. <laughs> so everybody uh take care carol it was wonderful to see you yeah it's great being I here congratulations on your podcast it's totally awesome oh thank you thank <laughs> you hope you, you give me a shout out on linkedin i appreciate yes. that and facebook as well and um for those of you who are wondering when can they get this uh the link to the podcast um you will hopefully be able to access that between um, 24 and 48 hours. The links will be shared on all social media platforms. So just go ahead and wherever you get your podcast for the uh, audio, wherever Anchor FM, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts in your local areas. So again, thank you, Carol. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate all you. All right. Bye for now. Bye-bye.